Hey y'all, so welcome to another full moon ceremony. This full moon is in Libra and we'll also be discussing the fiasco that is the Will Smith slap, right? There's so much things to say about uh everything that's going on with the planetary alignments what's going on with the news what's going on with celebrities and what's going on with the everyday person but before we get into all of that let's clear the room clear the energy and make space for us to be present during this full moon ceremony so let me sage the air first let me light it up light it up light it up light it up Okay. Ooh. Spirit, clear out any energy that does not want us to be in our highest alignment. Let us free our mind. Let us be in our right intentions to receive these messages. Let us be willing to change people, places, and things to reach our ascension, to reach our highest potential. And let the messages be clear and resonate with the viewers for their spiritual journey and their highest abundance. Ooh, Ashe, Ashe. Mm -hmm. Even the cards. <laughs> Let me make sure everything is out. Alrighty. And if you know me, you know I also like using this lavender smell, or should I say, uh, spray that smells like lavender <laughs> and it's all organic it's natural it just allows me to be present and clear when I get these messages and just be at peace of mind as well as take my time alrighty so let me pop open my notes so let's discuss Jada Pinkett and the Will Smith fiasco, right? Oh, before I even do that, how can I forget? Three taps from the singing bowl. Wow, I'm acting real brand new. Let's do three taps from the singing bowl. Inhale and then exhale. Alrighty. Now that I got everything out the way, let's get into Will Smith and Jada Smith and the slap heard around the world, right? So in the recent Grammys, no, not Grammys, the Oscars, Oscars. So during the recent Oscars of 2022, Will Smith and Chris Rock and Jada Smith were all attendees and Chris Rock was hosting the actual Oscars. So he made a joke a bit about Jada looking like G.I.J. because Jada came out with her bald head. She's always had a short hair, a pixie look, but this time around she shaved it and it looked very bold. So Chris Rock makes the joke about Jada looking like G.I. Jane, the audience chuckles and they laugh. It's nothing outrageous. It's not anything like, ha, 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 ha. It's not anything menacing or I don't know why I had to say it and do it like that, but it wasn't anything menacing. However, uh, Jada didn't like it. Even Will chuckled. And then when Jada gave Will a particular look, Will understood what time it was and he rose to the occasion. Okay, he understood the assignment and he walks onto the stage and slapped Chris Rock. So when that happened, everybody was shocked. Many people thought it was fake. Come to find out it was not. And come to find out that a lot of people on the internet did not agree with what Will Smith did. Jada came out and said she had alopecia. She was very insecure and she did not appreciate what Chris Rock did, but she didn't condone the slap. Will Smith came out and apologized. He ended up being banned from the Oscars for like 10 years. And a lot of people are just very, I guess, disappointed in Will Smith because they thought he was just a better man, I guess. And Chris Rock was doing comedy tours, but his tickets were $40 before the slap. After the slap, his tickets were $400 a pop. Ridiculous. Capitalism will always find a way to capitalize. Don't forget that. So a lot of people on the internet and real life, this is very much first world 
problems, first world people problems. So a lot of people were speaking their point of view if they agreed that Will should have slapped Chris Rock or if they felt like Chris Rock was out of line. And a lot of people's general consensus was Will Smith was wrong, that he shouldn't have condoned, uh, he should not have conducted himself like that, and that Chris Rock was in the right. And a lot of people took it to the extent like Chris Rock should sue Will Smith. Chris Rock came out and said, no, he's not going to sue him. But now allegedly he might. A lot of people kind of wanted to shame Will. Like make him seem, make it seem like slapping Chris Rock was the worst thing that he could ever do in life. As if there are real harmful crimes being committed every single day. So what I want to do is peel back the layers between Will Smith and Jada Smith's relationship, who they are as individuals, as well as how does this tie into this whole Libra full moon? And I will tell you. So if you didn't know, Jada is a, let me see my notes. Jada is a Libra and is the Libra full moon. And Will Smith is a Virgo. So there are heavy elements, there's sun signs, of earth energy with will being a virgo and sword energy air energy with jada being a libra jada is very non-conventional she's very much breaks the rules sets her own path very feisty um very much career concerned but also not trying to be the best just existing existing in her authentic self however she decides to display herself or display her artistry whereas will has always been very much into responsibility politics being the nice guy playing a particular role you know the safe negro he very much career uh, Academy Award favorite, um, very much established, played different roles, different genres, had a TV show, The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, ended up in acting, playing, again, different genres, different across the board, and very well known, very well decorated, very much respected in his field of acting. A lot of people idolize Will and Jada's relationship because they saw it as like the perfect, especially in black spaces, they were called black couple goals. They were seen as the, what you would aspire to have or be in a relationship. And it's basically off of, you know, face value. We don't know these people. We don't hang with these people. The only time that we get to know and see these people is on a screen. We'll never see them in real life. So what we have been seeing through their curation of their relationship and their public image, a lot of people bought into the perfection of Will Smith and Jada Smith. Now, a couple of years back during the pandemic, Jada Smith was having an extramarital relationship situation an entanglement, her words, with this R&B artist, August Alsina. At the time, he was in his early 20s, and Jada was going through her own battle. She talked about it on her show, Red Table Talks, where she was unhappy all the time. She was drinking a lot. She was having sex addiction. She was talking about masturbating all the time. Like She felt like she lost herself. She didn't know who she was. She didn't feel content in her life, whereas Will Smith was continuing to prosper. So at that time, they, Jada and August, had an entanglement, entanglement as Jada said. Now, it's been said and leaked throughout the years that Will and Jada has an open marriage. People have joked about that Will and Jada have an open marriage, but nothing has ever been confirmed. There's never been hard evidence. There's never been mistresses or misters or whatever the male version of mistresses is. And we've never seen anybody who can claim I was with Will or I was with Jada. So it's always been a rumor, an unfounded one. So when Jada had her expose exposed by August Alsina, because he was a struggling artist, he wasn't really making bank, he had gone through a lot of personal stuff. So he was trying to get back into the R&B industry by way of clout chasing. So he ended up saying and making a song about how he used to, you know, get down with Jada. And then Jada couldn't ignore it because the song became popular. And you know how 
rumors are. You know when salacious things happen, people love to talk about it, drawing it out, add two senses, remix it, add the hot sauce to it. Everybody got something to say about it. So it just kept on persisting, persisting, persisting. And August went on different radio shows to promote his song and album that didn't do much in the long run, even with this expose about his relationship with Jada and he gave personal details. He said Will knew about it. It wasn't a secret. Hung out with um Will and Jada's son, Jaden. Will and Will and Jada's son Jaden was hanging out with August and that's how Jada met August through her son, which is, I'm not gonna lie to you, scandalous. Okay. Very hmm. but anywho, uh she met August through her son and then started having this rendezvous. So a lot of people felt that Jada stepped below her prized position as black Hollywood couple goals. Like, why would you cheat on Will with August? August was so young and dumb. He was going through his own traumas, a lot of deaths surrounding his family because he has a tumultuous background, poverty, you know, broken families, home, drug addiction, like all of that runs in his family from Louisiana. So he was going through some things and they both found love in a hopeless place, Jada and August. But it seemed like Jada knew her role because again, it's been alleged that Will and Jada has always had an open marriage. So Jada was able to bounce back to her husband and leave it at that. But it seemed like August was so heart strong or heart heartbroken or wanting another rebound pussy chance. Like he was seemed like he was still yearning for something that was not there. And that's what a lot of people looked at Jada like, wow, I can't believe this is the type of guy you would get with. He's so young. He has nothing to offer. And there was a lot of jokes, a lot of jokes. Again, when it's salacious, when it's gossipy, when it fits into that low vibrational energy, everybody wants to add their two cents into it and give their spin on things, right? So when that happened and... Will and Jada had to talk about it on the Red Table Talks about this August Alcida situation. They basically said that they have an agreement, Will and Jada, basically not saying open marriage, but in so few words pointing at open marriage and that Will knew about it and it wasn't a big deal and she called it itself, herself an entanglement. And a lot of people felt like Jada was emasculating Will because again, we live in patriarchy. Patriarchy can never fathom a healthy polygamy or um, polyamory relationship where the woman takes charge and the woman is able to be her authentic self, have quote unquote side people, have extramarital affairs and not like be a whole reckless mess or still be able to have the respect of her main man, which would be Will. Because a lot of men are very much feel that they own the woman's essence. They feel like they are the dictator. If I'm with you, I own you. You belong to me. Your autonomy is tied to my opinion and what I desire. So if it was a situation like Beyonce and Jay-Z, you better go, Becky, with the good hair. It seemed like everybody was like, oh my God, who is this? Who is this? Nothing concrete came out about what the Becky was, who the Becky is, what the Becky looked like, what the Becky name is. So it just became aligned with like no substantial evidence. But people know Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce. But for some reason, they just couldn't let go about the entanglement that Jada had. And ever since then, people kind of felt like Jada was just disrespectful to Will, that she doesn't respect him, all because she decided to do what most people do in marriages, like 50% of marriages like end in divorce. There's like a high number of marriages that have infidelity. Like <laughs> she's just doing what most people do. And at least they're honest about it. Will knew about it. But it seems like for some reason, Jada's authenticity, Jada's ability to make her own moves and define herself as she should seems to unbother people where they see Jada as some type of like voodoo priestess or like trying to work some voodoo on Will that she's some type of Mancharian candidate or femme fatale because she owns who she is and what she desires versus in typical patriarchy, the woman is chasing the male gaze. Jada is chasing, I'm not going to necessarily say her gaze, but she's aligning with her true self, what she desires, even if it's outside the traditional norms. And Will is emotionally intelligent or at least willing to allow that to be the same. And previously, when people would hear the gossip, the rumor about 
Will and Jada having an open marriage, they always assume it was Will having extramarital affairs. They always assume Will had more women companions because of course patriarchy only can see cheating through the lens of like men they can't control themselves they just like reality you know they don't mean to but it's just you know how men are biologically set up and it's easy and convenient to the male ego to believe that women only want one penis for the rest of their lives that women don't fantasize about other men that women don't have extramarital relationships or extracurricular entanglements men really do believe once a woman becomes committed to him that that's the only penis that she'll ever truly desire, one and done, and their deluded male minds. So when Jada seems to not fit into the black woman archetype of couple goals, black power couple, black woman aesthetics, they're attacking her. And they're using Will as some type of like sad story or some type of victim to reaffirm their discuss the stain angst with jada doing what she does wants on her own accord her being a libra and libra is very much of that cardinal energy very much of that assertive energy will on the other hand is a virgo will has always put his career first because he wanted to be the best and he has been the best he has a career that's like over 20 30 years long very successful and even his children has been able to benefit off of his brand off of his name willow has done acting as well as she is a singer she's a rock singer she has beautiful long locks Jaden has been able to do uh, rapping and other activities i think he also does fashion as well so his children are doing very well his oldest son trey I think he does DJing, but for the most part, you will Smith son. Like you're you you will be okay. Even if you decide to do nothing with your life, the fact that Will Smith is your daddy, you will be a okay. Like, okay, that's just how that works. That's how nepotism, celebrity, wealth, capitalism, that's how all that works. It's classism. So for the most part, Will has always been able to keep up the facade of Mr. Good Guy, Mr. Perfect, the ideal black male, you know, the good guy. And because of the slap, a lot of people start thinking that Will is somehow losing his mental or, again, Jada's using that voodoo, that shiru over him and he's unraveling, that he's having some type of mental duress or his mental illness. You know, the internet stay talking. Everybody's diagnosing like they got the licensing. So Will has, again, apologized, uh, had to very much take public humiliation. Again, some people were pulling down his materials, like his artistry and whatnot. He ended up having to apologize. Again, the Academy banned him for 10 years. So a lot of people also felt like he shouldn't have gotten that Oscar. He did win an Oscar for a movie. Lord knows what the movie's called. I didn't watch it. But he won an Oscar that night after the slap. And a lot of people felt like he shouldn't have won because he slapped Chris Rock. It was just preposterous because we live in a society where, especially American society, where violence is the norm. Everything is violence. Your video games are violence. Your storytelling is violence. Your movies are violence. Even the way that you have sex, beat the pussy up, like it's violence. Like, and now all of a sudden we're doing this purity contest. We're doing this respectability politics. We're doing this, oh my God, civility. What about the children? And I'm like, really? Really Grand Theft Auto? It's just like, really Call of Duty? Like, it's just like, really warn Ukraine back to by NATO? Like, it's, it's really like, stop it. Please stop it. The worst thing on earth is not a slap. You'll get over it. Chris Rock didn't even fall over. Chris Rock was just like, damn, he slapped me in the face. He didn't cry. But anywho. So Will Smith, it seems to be spiraling. A lot of people want to, you know, drag him, talk about how he's not man enough because he can't get Jada in line. Jada is humiliating him, emasculating him. And he's facing a lot of consequences because of that slap. And where I see them is that they live through each other and that's what keeps them together. And what I will say, for example, I'll give examples. Will Smith has always had to play a particular male role. He had to be the good guy, the clean cut guy. And that's not real human behavior. We are angry. We are happy. We are sad. We have a range of emotion. And Will Smith has been able to cultivate an one particular image of himself. And now that that image is not living up to the standard, a lot of people are starting to look at him as fake. 
which I think that is allowing Will to look at himself, redefine himself, as well as take off the fake mask. And having a public ego death, he has to reanalyze who he is and the decisions that he has made. Whereas Jada... Jada has always been a rebel without a cause. She's always been a spicy little mommy. And I also think short girls just be having an attitude and just be doing the most to begin with, kind of like chihuahuas. But nonetheless, Jada has always wanted to buck against whatever system. And I see, mean that in the sense of like, she's never been conventional. She's never been traditional. She's always done things on her own term. And I think that has to also do with her upbringing. Before she became famous, before she was on the show, A Different World, she talked about being in an abuse relationship that she literally had to flee Baltimore, where she's from. Will Smith is from Philly, so Northeasterners. Um, Jada definitely had to just flee the relationship and like run into Hollywood because it was that abusive. And I feel like with Jada, it's just like she doesn't want to feel that small, even though she really is small, small in height. She doesn't want to feel small. She doesn't want to feel like she doesn't have the power and it comes off as high strung. I think for Will, Will didn't want to be like his father because his father was very abusive, very physically abusive towards his mother. He would witness that and he's always felt guilty for not being able to step in and protect his mother. So I feel like for Will, he wants to be loved, but it's also like, I would like want to love the bad parts of you away. One of those, like, I want to save you because I'm really trying to save myself. And that's something within Will that he has to figure out through therapy and figure out, like, he's not responsible for his father's shitty actions and his father's domestic violence issue. He was only a kid. He could not protect his mother. And that's not something that he should carry as his fault. But he also has to recognize that when people are mistreating you or taking advantage of you or doing, doing you any type of, like, greasy to stand up for yourself, like, you can't love someone who's trying to purposely hurt you. It's giving me very much codependency tease. And I feel like for both of those, both people, Jada, Jada sees the stability in Will and Will sees like the freedom in Jada. And that's what attracts them to each other. Until they both do their shadow work, they're going to like slowly resent each other. Because also after the whole August Alsina fiasco there was a video of will and jada like one of those like i'm in my house hey guys going live on my instagram taking you with me around the house type of things she was doing on her instagram live and will was like you can't just be recording me like that and jada was like come on now like don't be upset like it's not that big of a deal and will was like i have a brand i have an image to protect like you just can't be filming me and he was very like rash with her like he was just upset and tired of her and jada was trying to keep it cute but you could see in jada's face she was like damn like is, is, is that is, given all of that was that necessary so there's an, a part of them that resents it's kind of like buyer beware like you got something and then you wanted something you got it, and then you realized that's not it and i feel like to a degree with the image that they both present it's weighing them down because their authentic self is not able to expand and grow because they're too busy wearing this mask. Jada being a badass, trendsetter, breaking the norms. Will being, you know, the good guy, the archetype of happy-go-lucky, I'm the safe character, and that not and that being a chokehold for his real expressions and his real feelings and him being his authentic self, good, bad, or different. You cuss, I cuss, we cuss. You know, being normal, being average, being able to accept yourself and your authenticity regardless. So that is what both of them are publicly going through. And with this being the Libra full moon, Libra is an air sign. It is the seventh house. The seventh house is very much about partnerships, marriage, collaboration, fair and balance, diplomacy, truth, respect for hierarchy, and so on and so forth. Out of all the zodiac signs, Libra is the only non-animal or non-entity of the zodiac signs. It's the scales. It represents even 50-50 imbalance. So this is what the energies of this full moon ceremony will be about. How do you balance what is going on in life and what you are going through personally to get the results that you want to even when times are topsy-turvy how do we navigate that so we can get the best results that work in our particular interest <sighs> okay so let's get into the planetary alignment 
before we get into the article that we'll be discussing the full moon ceremony. I also want to put out there, if you are religious, this is probably like time of Ramadan. So happy Ramadan to you. Happy Easter. Good Friday to you. As well as if you're spiritual, you know that this is April, the beginning of the Zodiac year. So therefore we're talking about Ishtar, we're talking about Esther, the energy of rebirth, the energy of blooming. This is when, you know, the birds are chirping, it gets warmer, things are budding, you know, it's just that liveliness. So this is the energy that we're going through as well as with balancing the energies of new because we're still experiencing that retrograde energy of Pisces, the ending of the Zodiac wheel. So, so we're still dealing with some of that energy as well as we're trying to welcoming, welcome in that good energy, that positive energy, that abundant energy, that new beginnings energy, that even possible romantic energy. So currently Mercury is in Taurus. Mercury enters Gemini at Friday, April 29th, 2022. Venus in Pisces. Venus enters Aries at Monday, May 2nd, 2022. Mars in Pisces. Mars enters Aries at Tuesday, May 24th, 2020. Jupiter in Pisces. Jupiter enters Aries at Tuesday, May 10th, 2020. Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn goes station direct in Aquarius at Saturday, June 4th. Uranus in Taurus. Uranus goes station retrograde in Taurus at Wednesday, August 24th, 2022. Neptune in Pisces. Neptune goes station direct or station retrograde in Pisces at Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto goes station retrograde in Capricorn at Friday, April 29th, 2022. And Chiron in Aries. Chiron goes station retrograde in Aries at Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. So we have a lot of energies with this Libra full moon that's our in association because the ruling planet for Libra and Taurus is Venus. So we're talking about that Venusian energy. We're talking about that love and passion. I did talk about how we might even be discussing romance. This could be the energies of a new relationship, a new project, a new beginning, even growing your home. So like a new baby becoming pregnant. So there's an energy of shifting. There's an energy of like releasing and shedding, but also the energy of rebirth and new beginnings. So let me pull up an article from mindbodygreen.com. The first full moon of the astrological year is here, and it's a super moon. April 14th, 2022. Uh, I think this is in England, so they're a day ahead of us. In the States, it would be April 16th, 2022. That's when I'm doing the recording. And that's when the full moon is occurring. Spring is well underway and the first full moon of the season and the astrological new year arrives this Saturday. Here's what to know about this full super moon plus how to ma maximize its energy for an astrologer. What to know about this full moon? Be sure to look at the skies this weekend with the full moon peaking at 2.57 p.m. on Saturday, April 16th. So yes, today, like I said. And currently where I am in Massachusetts, it's raining. So I can't see nothing. It's very cloudy. But I do believe it because I did see the energies ripening yesterday. And it was very beautiful. It's very yellow. It's very bold. The moon. You'll be able to see it and feel its energy in the nights before and after. I just talked about yesterday's moon. Also known as the pink moon. April's full moon marks the full first full moon of the astral. April's full moon marks the first full moon of the astrological new year, making it an excellent time to let things go ahead of the rest of the year. 
this moon is also a super moon, meaning it's a bit closer to Earth than usual, making it appear bigger and brighter. As modern mystic and author Astrology SOS Amani Quinn tells MBG, supermoons are known to be more energetically potent, and this moon happens to fall in the sign of Libra. The moon will also be squared with Pluto. Pluto is looking at rebirth. Libra is also about truth and balance. So what is so what is trying to be transformed within your life? Quinn explains, adding that this moon asks us to reveal truth. Quinn suggests getting closer on any illusions you may be buying into that need to be brought to light so you can clear them out. It's hard to clear out belief systems or things we've been telling ourselves if we're unaware of them and that aren't in alignment or aren't true to us. And this moon, especially being squared Pluto, would mean that things that aren't working for us are going to come to light so we can transform through them and become more aligned with our path and where we're going, she says. Let me see. How to work with this energy where new moons are about setting intentions and starting fresh. Full moons are about releasing what isn't working for us. And since this is the full moon of spring, the and the moon is squared with Pluto. It's the perfect time to let go of any lingering winter energy you're still feeling and make room for rebirth. With rebirth and transformation in mind, Quinn reminds becoming... Quinn recommends becoming aware of where you might be wearing rose-colored glasses in relationship, friendships, or your workplace, whatever it may be. Set aside some time this weekend to get closer on where you're kidding yourself and what your heart is really asking for. You could do any of you can do any kind of journaling, clearing out what comes up during this time and relates to seeing people or things accurately Quinn says so I'm gonna leave it here and let's see what's on the checklist okay so what I'm gonna be working with are these two decks the modern witch tarot deck for the tarot portion as well as the romance angel oracle deck for some clarification in regards to love and in regards to how to avoid being a cautionary tale as with will and jada in the sense of like trying to find salvation in a relationship instead of doing that interpersonal shadow work because the way they both see love is kind of i wouldn't say jaded per se but it's not healthy, especially with the slap where I see Will lose his mind and slapping people around. And I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying it's not the worst thing in the world that's ever happened. I've seen worse things on the internet, especially on sites like World Star Hip Hop and Reddit. Please stop. Please stop. And with Jada, there's an energy of like trying to be and do too much. And trying to figure out where that stems from. Why is it like you have to posture as this big and tough person when that is only harming you? As well as trying to find security within yourself. Not trying to compensate what you're lacking through a relationship. Whether it's a relationship with a stable figure like Will. Or whether it's like trying to escape. You know, trying to have your Stella get her groove on. Viva la loca. Remind me of my youth. Instead of trying to play escapism in relationships, try to figure out what you need for yourself and then give yourself that love, that care. Because a relationship is only a reflection of yourself. So you can't hide within a relationship and use that as a way to bypass doing that shadow work, doing that introspective work, doing that healing work. It, we're all on a journey and that journey is to, is to through self-discovery and ascension. So... Let's pull out some cards for this overall energy in regards to this uh, Will and Jada fiasco. Okay. 
and what are the messages and the lessons that we can take away from that particular I want to I don't want to say necessarily a cautionary tale as opposed to like eavesdropping it's like a public eavesdropping in the sense of like we weren't supposed to see this we were supposed to see the pic perfect picture image of black love and couples goals and black hollywood royalty and just royalty in general like a lot of artists a lot of rappers have always said i want me a will and jay to love i want me a beyonce and jay love and a lot of your faves are turning out to be regular people too they bleed red too the only thing is that they are capitalists but they are no different right Especially when it comes to the dating market and these online debaucheries of a conversation. It's always like, well, you know, Beyonce and Rihanna and Nicki Minaj and um, Jada. Those are like the prime women, the prime women, the prime women. Like if you... If you, if you experience hardships, if you experience cheating, if you experience bad relationships, well, you should expect that because you're a regular person. You're a nobody. You're a stranger. But like Jay and Beyonce, like, you you know, Beyonce is the standard. If you're not Beyonce, just expect whatever you can get. And now it's being shown like, yeah, even Beyonce gets cheated on. Yep, even Rihanna gets cheated on. Even Nikki, you know, goes through heartbreaks. They are regular people just like all of us. I don't think we should hold anybody to a marriage or couple standards or any type of standards you have, should have your own principles and within this libra full moon is talking about that partnership that compatibility are you balanced with yourself first and foremost before you're out here chasing a relationship because again a relationship is only a reflection of you if you're insecure you're going to be with, some, with someone who's insecure if you're confident you're going to be with someone who's confident if you have lingering shadow issues you're going to attract someone who triggers those lingering shadow issues or they just mirror it just like you right if you lie they cheat if you still they'll kill it's just the same matching the energy it is the same debauchery birds of a feather when you are with someone long enough you start picking up on the same habits you start liking the same things you start saying the same words because of that closeness so there is no like oh they're messed up or they're effed up or there's something wrong with them but there's no nothing wrong with me especially when you choose these people you get in relationships with these people there's no way that you could be like it's just them it's not me and even let's say there wasn't an issue with you but the fact that you even got into a relationship that could have compromised your morals or disrespected you or even in this case people claiming that jada emasculates will okay even getting into an emasculating relationship you gotta ask yourself how did you get there why did you accept that like what is it about you that attracted that particular energy that's accountability that's growth that's adulting but let's do one more shuffle to see what is the energy for the collective what are some messages that we need to uh, receive during this labor full moon especially in regards to partnership love career um commitments trust truth diplomacy, very much that justice card, and some insights in regards to Will and Jada. Why not? Huh. I always end up removing this card and I forgot that this card existed in this deck. I just got the shuffling. And the first card is this particular card. And this is just like a blank card, but it does have a nice saying and I'll read it to y'all. You are a badass being full of life love and possibilities through this deck may you find a path to your best self and i love this message especially when i'm doing readings that are deep or there's a lot of emotions around that particular reading whether it's anxiousness or even like sadness or whatever i love when this comes out to remind me like you know relax breathe in and out because god would never put you in a position where you'd be fucked up because that's not how the divine works. If anything, this is a learning lesson or an opportunity to grow, expand out my comfort zone, as well as help other people do the same thing in their own readings. Now, let's get some messages for uh, Jada. Let's do Jada first, the Libra, since this is a Libra full moon. What are some messages for uh, Jada or some insights about this situation from Jada's point of view that we can all learn from? 
Okay, we got the Queen of Wands. And this is very Jada. She is spicy little mommy, okay? As you can see with this Queen of Wands, she is very, very confident. Legs crossed like a lady. Sunflower. You see that she has her own wands, her own shop. So she has her own way of doing things. She's very feisty, very confident, very assertive, very much like I own this space. You know how when men manspread, they like own the area. It's like she doesn't have to manspread to own the area to get the eyes on her. All eyes on me, very much. Um, the energy of I am woman, hear me roar. Interestingly enough, there's a little cat beside her and that represents clairvoyancy. That represents the ability to prophesize, to see things, to be charismatic, to draw people in, to be able to match the energy. Very much, I wouldn't say a shape shifter, but very much like an actor, right? They have method acting skills. They have other type of skills and it's all a way to play a particular character. They're not necessarily fake. They're just an actor and a great actor makes you believe the character and the role that they play. I feel like with this particular energy of Jada, she can give you whatever you desire because she's looking for your approval versus her own approval. I'm feeling this is the energy of like mirroring. Ha, perfect word, mirroring. So whatever you do, I respond with the same energy. It's, it's not necessarily fake as opposed to it's not necessarily authentic either. You know, it's kind of like miming. If you ever see mimes or someone, let's say, is trying to sell you something. So they open up the conversation of, oh, my God, I love your shoes. And you're like, oh, thank you. It's like, oh, where did you get them from? And then you'll be like, oh, TJ Maxx. Oh, I love TJ Maxx. Did you hear about the sale that's going on? Oh, no, tell me more. Well, girl, I got this at the... Next thing you know, you buy a membership, you get in the platinum plan. Now you subscribe it for 14 years. It's that type of draw you in. And it's manipulative, but it's not necessarily mischievous as opposed to I'm trying to block my true self from being exposed, from being vulnerable. So I'll give you whatever identity or whatever image, whatever to your liking. So I can still keep my true self protected because I feel vulnerable. I feel insecure. I feel unprotected so i'll just mirror a particular character for you so that keeps you at bay and i can keep my unprogress unfiltered shadow self cloaked in the closet the second card we have is justice very on par for miss libra herself jada I feel like with this, again, very assertive. As you can see with this Justice card, it's a woman with a sword. And you can see she's looking directly in front of you. Very unfazed, expressionless, very much ready to strike, very much the first to, to you know stake the claim. And as you can see, there is a balance. You can see with the scales. I feel like with this particular energy, especially when we're talking about Jada, I think she loves, I think she's very passionate. I think she's very vocal. I think she's very assertive. She means what she says. She says what she means. And I think this energy is very much like, again, I put on this role because it's a safe role to play versus my true messy, you know, maybe um, immature, scared, authentic self. It's kind of like hiding in the closet if you were like a homosexual. It's one of those like double consciousness if you're a black person surrounded by white, um, you know, MAGA hats. It's the energy of tucking your true in your true self just to fit in. But it's also a way to keep balance and harmony because again, if you tell the true self, you come out the closet, you may lose friends. People might start to disrespect you. It's one of those things that it keeps the peace, it keeps the balance. So I play the role. Also, with this scale, what I'm getting from it is that Jada really does love Will. I don't think she's playing well. I don't think any of those conspiracy theories are that she's using voodoo and all this other. No, I think she's just very high strung. But I think it's just the way that she comes across versus like who she really is. It's one of those things where you meet someone and you don't like them. And then once you get to know them, you're like, you know what? You're not that bad. Yeah, you're kind of off on this. You're not as progressive as I want. You know, sometimes you'd be saying out of pocket shit. But for the most part, you're a decent person. Where it counts, character wise, moral rise, you know, your your overall true self, your core values, your philosophies. Oh, I rock with that. But that other stuff, mm, we might have to work on that. And it's that particular energy. I think Jada loves being married. I think Jada loves Will. I think she loves her life. I think she loves her kids. I just think that there's an energy of like trying to hide from 
to, from her true self, trying to hide inside. And the energy of like trying to hide my true self is it, very much giving me trapped in a closet, but no R. Kelly, because he's disgusting. We have the Knight of Cups here. I also feel like when she thinks she's right, she's right. I don't feel like she's very apologetic for shit. I'm going to be honest with you. I think she is also someone who loves to love. I think the way she loves is very uh, non-conventional, but it's sincere. But I also feel like she's one of those people, um, when she feels vulnerable, when she feels like unsupported, she pulls back. She, you know, builds up a wall. Um... And she is kind of a person, you know, some women, like, they, they get very temperamental. I feel like she kind of that, too. But for the most part, like, she means well. It's just that she might not be the best communicator, which is funny because she does red table talks and all she does is talk. But I feel like she's not that great of a communicator. But if she actually took her time to, like, break things down and, like, say what she wants with true comp not necessarily confidence but like intent being like straight to the point standing on that and then making it what what it what you want it's not just like oh i want to be loved or i want to be seen it's like i love you i see you like what are you talking about do, do you want to be romanticized do you want you know to spend more time together do you want to take long walks in the park like what do you want like say it for what it is and i feel like that aspect of vulnerability she's not really great at and the other card we have for Miss Jada, we have the Page of Pentacles here. And I feel like with this, she wants to show Will like she's invested in this energy. She also wants the public to see like she's vested in this energy. Like August was never going to be something that she was seriously committed to. August was never going to replace Will. She was never going to run off and marry him. Maybe during orgasm, she promised that. But in real life, like, come on now. She was not going to leave her Hollywood prestige for a failing and like one hit wonder R&B singer. Like, let's just be real. I think it was just something to do when there was nothing else to do. Will was on the movie set. She felt depression and a lack of fulfillment and things like that. And he was just a distraction. But I think with this whole internet speaking and how, you know, people put their toe in your relationship and next thing you know, they're wishing ill. Because like a lot of people on the internet are wishing ill on the Smiths. It is pretty disgusting. It's like they want them to get divorced. They want to see a messy relationship. They want the tea spilled. They want some type of a love and hip hop or real house live of Atlanta type of drama. And I feel like with Jada, she wants to show that she is committed to making the marriage last. She's committed to improving their marriage. If she did indeed, I think this is Jada's point of view. If I did really emasculate you, how can I fix that? That's what I'm getting. I think Jada might be aloof to how Will feels because she's so caught up in her own situation she doesn't necessarily see what will is going through she doesn't necessarily hear hear will she's so focused on what she's not getting she's not seeing how will's not getting either and how she needs to compromise on that and be there for him and uh align with him have his back in certain ways and that she may the way that she speaks, especially in regards to relationships, the way that she relates to him, it might come off as dismissive or cold. It might come off as insensitive or like a, a lack of respect for how, I guess you could say, not necessarily professional, but like how serious to the degree of like excellence he takes his craft and he takes his personal brand, but also like... I feel like Will wants to go back to when things felt a lot lighter, when the relationship was new, when like they were getting to know each other. I feel like he feels there's distance and like there's just like the Hollywood shuffle, the Hollywood routine versus that spontaneity, that passion, that, um, what do you call that? Spontaneity, <laughs> spontaneity, that like carefreeness before the kids, before like the expectation of being black Hollywood royalty, just like two people getting to know each other, getting to vibe together and just being in that shared space. And I feel like Jada wants that too. They're just not communicating it well. Let's see from Jada's point of view with the love romance oracle card. What is her love or showing or wanting to tell? She's ruled by Venus. What is her heart trying to say? 
express your love go ahead and make the romantic gesture i feel like it's up to jada to like strike a move and she might have like the oscars fiasco happened a couple of weeks ago so maybe she's been like being more forward maybe sexually but like even emotionally trying to do things to make will feel more secure trying to express like her sincerity and her investment within their marriage i also feel like maybe they they're talking more about their feelings opening up sharing like what they're going through mentally emotionally physically however sexually whatever the case may be what's missing how they can help each other get there and then they should go to couples therapy but not no ayama shit like some real real therapy and have that done behind closed doors don't tell nobody about it don't record nothing don't answer to nobody get you assistance get you a social manager a social media manager to handle that information and keep it pushing because people just want the drama all right people don't want to talk about how inflation's eating their ass right now they want celebrity salaciousness to keep their mind on off of the misery that they're going through so it's sick it's toxic it's parasitic all around but what i will say about this situation with will and jada just focus on yourselves because truth be told that's what we should all be focusing ourselves and our community especially when climate change if we do not because the ipcc the intergovernmental panel on climate change they said if we don't decrease our carbon footprint, and when I say our, I mean the government, like the military complex, because they are the biggest polluters on this planet, and corporations like fossil fuel, if they don't decrease their emissions by 50% within the next three years, we will be at a point globally where we will not be able to return. We will be at that catastrophic phase where the West is burning and the East is being drowned in water, sea water, sea water uh, rising. So these are real situations that we need to confront. We can't be climate denialists. We have to take advantage and seize the day, even if that means good trouble. But that's a lot of stress to deal with when your child tax credits are over, inflation in the grocery stores, dollar isn't reaching as far as it used to, rents going up, you know, barely keeping by. It's hard to focus on the micro, which would be like, again, climate change, when you're micro like what's going on around the kitchen table is so horrid so i understand why we are where we are right now however we got to get to it and this is the perfect time this being april and all and the beginning of the new zodiac year let's get some messages from will how he sees the situation not only with the chris rock slap but also with his relationship with jada what does he want to say? His energy, his viewpoint, how he relates in relationship and love. Oh my, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I shuffle? Huh. Did I shuffle? Yes, 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 I did shuffle. I don't know why I'm, I'm saying this. I don't know why I'm saying this. And I do know why I'm saying this. Because I literally said, oh my, because I saw Jada with the queen of wands maybe if i play it back um i'll show you or when you're watching this you play it back that's why i asked did i shuffle this did i shuffle this because the first three cards that came out was the queen of wands and i was like are you serious or did i not shuffle it and i'm like no i shuffled it i know i shuffled it and it's because jada popped up that's the first thing will wanted us to know or will's energy wanted us to know that I think with this particular energy, Jada is very much on the front of his mind, right? Not just as a partner, but the mother of his ch ch children, as well as like his, his significant other. They said and called each other life partners. Like they will always be together. Even that means Jada's on one wing of the house and Will is on the other wing of the house, but they will stay together. They are stuck together. And I feel like with this particular energy, Will is starting to rethink what he sees and how he engages in his relationship in his marriage. I'm not necessarily seeing like a divorce or anything, but I feel like there's things within him he feels like he needs to handle and he needs to check. And <laughs> with this particular energy, it's one of those like, I think we need a break. 
to like reevaluate ourselves in the relationship. That's the energy that I'm particularly getting, especially with this Knight of Pentacles in reverse. The Knight is the slowest moving of the deck. In particular, this Knight of Pentacles. Usually they're fast, 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 the Knights. But with this Knight of Pentacles, it's slow, especially when it's in reverse. It's damn near not moving, if not moving at all. And with this High Priestess in reverse, I feel like with this is one of those situations where it's like we got to tap out from what people are saying, other people's opinions, and we need to come back into ourselves. We need to come back into our relationships. But first, we need to do our own personal growth. We need to do our own personal journey right now. But we're still committed to the relationship. We're committed to the marriage, but we got to be committed to like improving ourselves first and foremost. That's what I'm getting. I feel like they are not entertaining the internet. Like, again, get a social media manager or something but it's very much don't listen to the hype because everybody wants to put their toe in it everybody wants to put their two cents in it everybody wants to see if they can have their own viral moment everybody is the smith da vinci cold cracker like everybody got something to say and it's one of those things like if you let the internet run your relationship you'll end up like asap rocky and rihanna having to cop claims and dismiss rumors and this that and a third like it's one of those things where people feel too comfortable it's like when you invite someone to your house and now they they think that they can come to your house anytime they please it's like no 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 there's standards there's rules there's boundaries and it's one of those situations we gotta log off and work on ourselves let's clarify this queen of wands i'm shocked i'm truly shocked the fact that um the Queen of Wands popped up. And that's why I really had to ask, like, did I shuffle? Did I shuffle? Anywho, <laughs> with this King of Cups in reverse, I feel like there is some, like, distance here. Fire and water, turbulence, very much, like, walking on eggshells, especially with Will. I feel like Will might think that maybe Jada has been taking advantage of him and that, like, Maybe she doesn't res respect him, that maybe what the people are saying are true, but more so like, does, do, do I love her more than she loves me type of energy? Like, does she love me in a way that she wouldn't be out of pocket like this? Or does she love me in a way that won't fuck up my brand, but also won't leave me like emotionally devastated. I feel like Will loves Jada. He loves Jada a lot. And he takes a lot of, not necessarily the good and the bad with Jada, but more so like her quirks and her particular traits. You know, when you're in a relationship, there's things about your partner you don't necessarily like, but because they are your partner, you're just kind of like, oh, I deal with it. A part of Jada's personality and her ways Will has tolerated and tried to like love her past those quote unquote flaws. But I feel like with Will, he's reanalyzing, rethinking, is this behavior supporting our relationship to be better? Or am I enabling this behavior, but by trying to love her past this, like, should I hold this a person accountable and how do I do so? I feel like it's a little cold. It's a little, what was it? In the Smith's house, it's very burr right now. I feel like it's very brisk right now in the Smith house. Maybe a few words, short words. How are you? Good. How's your day? Fine. Are you hungry? No. That type of vibe. <laughs> Let's clarify this uh, King of Cups. What is that giving us? Two of Wands. I feel like Will is weighing out his options. Again, I don't think Will wants to leave Jada, but he's also thinking, is that the best thing? Has this relationship run its course? It's not toxic, like they're not beating on each other, but like, is this like too much to bear? Is this like emotionally unhealthy? Like it's one of those type of situations, like you're not a horrible person, but we may not be good for each other. And I feel like with this two of wands, he's making a decision on like, if I do want to stay in this marriage and I do want to continue this and I want this relationship to get better, how does that look like? practically how can we meet in the middle how can we come together and improve our relationship behind closed doors and like be better people individually but 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 be better together as well be a better couple right where you're not doing sneak shit to each other or you know 
publicly having meltdowns and, you know, entanglements coming out the closet, slapping each other. Like, it's one of those energies. I don't want to say it for what it is because it's not that bad, but it, but it might be like you don't mean to like undercut someone, but you do it anyways. It's kind of that like shadow energy where if you don't check yourself, you start doing things that are unbecoming. Kind of like if you don't check your jealousy, you might try to sabotage someone that you're threatened by. It's one of that energy. And I feel like Will is looking back and seeing certain things and seeing it like maybe I can't see it from the perspective of like, maybe you're slightly trying to sabotage me or you feel some type of way. This is some type of get back. And Jada might be having to face the reality of like my intent, my conscious intent was not, but I also have to admit I did feel some type of way about whatever situation and I didn't act in my highest vibration. I did not act of my higher self. Maybe I did do certain things that were petty or there were certain things I didn't take accountability for. So I feel like to a degree, it's like Will is not necessarily parenting or not necessarily putting Jada in her place, but it's one of those things where it's like, I don't like this. I've always tolerated you doing this, but I don't like this. And I need you to respect that and like act accordingly. And I think for Jada, it's more like I need to find myself authentically and not the mirroring that I do. And also not like trying to be a rebel without a cause, trying to just be non-traditional, just being con uh, uh, contrarian, not being, not playing a part to avoid doing that inner work, that true being your vulnerable, naked man in the mirror, quality self care time. Let's get the third card. And I think she does also want Will. She does want to talk to Will. She does want to break the ice. She wants to work on their marriage. She wants it to be better, but she doesn't know how to make it. She doesn't know how to start. She doesn't know how to apologize. She doesn't know how to make things right. She doesn't know how to come to the middle. It's a learning process, especially since they both have been playing roles. They're an actor and an actress, and all they do is act, even in their relationships, even with themselves. Hmm. Is life imitating art? Is it art imitating life? It's very much that. You become your job. So a lot of them, not a lot of them, but Jill, <laughs> Jill. Will and Jada have to find out what is their authentic self, what does that look like, and how to bring that to the surface, and how does their authentic self mesh with their work-in-progress marriage. So we have the Hermit here, which is interesting because with the High Priestess here in reverse, to me it's reverse, and with the Hermit here in reverse as well, and they both have laptops, like I said, well, I'll help you see it in reverse. They both have laptops. The queen, the high priestess here has a laptop. As well as this hermit. It also has a laptop. And you see with this particular energy, it's like you got to disconnect. You got to disconnect from other people. You got to disconnect from the media sensation. But it's also, <clears throat> you have to spend that quality time with self. Because when the, we were talking about the hermit, it's not just in isolation. It's not just in peace. It's not just retrieving. When it's in reverse, it's literally like I'm, hide, I'm hiding in my room. Like I'm hibernating. Like I'm really on some like monk shit. Don't call me. Don't see me. Like I'm on a retreat. Like I'm out in the wilderness, like solo dolo. And with this particular energy, I think it's best for them to do that soul searching individually and outside of the public eye. Because again, it's only going to be salacious. <clears throat> oh, why is my throat getting dry? Let me take a sip of water. Ooh. So with this particular energy with Will, I think they are coming to a point of being real. The mask has cracked. And if they want their marriage to be successful, they better make sure that their um, their egg don't crack. But they'll be fine. Again, they are rich people. Very, very rich. Okay? They will be A-OK, -okay, regardless of how this thing plays out. Relationship-wise, as well as public media frenzy-wise, 
But um, yeah, I feel like they have to detach, especially from the roles that they play. I know Will is booked and busy. Will is probably going to be acting even when he's like halfway through death, like one leg in a grave, he's still going to be trying to act in somebody's motherfucking production. And I feel like with, um, with Jada, it's also like meditation, retrieving back to self, doing that self reflection and not burdening herself with like, Will is so successful. Let me match that energy. Let me get into this. Let me do that. Like not feeling that the need to compete, not feeling the need to keep up, just doing what she needs to do for herself. She might even delay red table talks or push that back or something like that. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be canceled, but an energy of like, I'm taking some personal time, kind of like Wendy, but like Wendy's situation is worse. And I don't mean to laugh, but her situation is truly worse. But um, let's see what is the love, romance, angel, oracle card for Will Smith. What is his love language? What is his love energy? What does he want to share? Or his aura around love wants to show. Hmm. I do feel like Will is super loyal. Super that's his personality, not just in a marriage, but like he's loyal to his friends. He's loyal to the people who are loyal to him. Still, you know, Hollywood shuffle. So, you know, the who's who, the A-listers, but very much like thorough. Like he's not like fake on the screen, fake in Hollywood, high, you know, smile, hee hee. And then like behind the scene is like a Jeffrey Epstein or Bill Cosby. I feel like he's very much up and down. Like what you see is what you get for the most part, but very much brushed airbrush, you know, comb, wax, you know, lightning or lighting and, you know, photo uh, 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 editing and all that. As real as you can get within the space of narcissism that is Hollywood. But we have two cards that came out. We have heart to heart conversations, honestly discuss your feelings with each other. And I told you like coming back into each other, you know, learning each other, but also doing that soul work separately, but also doing that within the relationship, regaining that flame, regaining that love, regaining that mutual respect, regaining that honesty, like working on yourself, but also working in the marriage, not trying to speed things up because we're going to the next Hollywood event. We don't want people in our business. We got to keep this image alive, but because we truly have done the work. So I feel like with this is being very vulnerable, being very honest about their feelings about each other and the relationship as you can see this man is very much like whatever let me see if you can see it you see his face he's like whatever and she's just like baby please let's talk let's talk about this their ancestors might be involved in their relationship very much older people i think will smith and jada's mother's still alive i think jada's father may have passed Will's father, I believe, has passed. Maybe his mother, too. But I feel like there's older people trying to give advice. There's maybe other couples trying to give advice. Um, I see there's a lot of, like, kind of, like, good, no good deed goes unpunished. Like, you mean well. You might not be executing it well, but you mean well. Um, but I feel like with this is Jada, you know, trying to prove her loyalty or prove, like, you know, I, I didn't mean to harm you. I didn't mean to disrespect you. I didn't mean to this, that, and the third. Like, I didn't know this is how you feel. Let's work on our marriage. And Will's kind of like, I need some time right now. I need to clear my head. But there is, you know, communication. They're trying to work things out. It's just one of those, like, you have a major fight and you got to, like, figure out how to make peace, but also resolve this issue so it doesn't happen again. And then we also have free yourself. It's time to take back control of your life. And I feel like for Will, that's very much it. Removing the mask. Be your authentic self. Yes, you're having a public ego death. So what? Rebuild your authentic self. Let people know this is who I am. I am Will Smith. Like I have a range of emotion. I'm not this stereotypical, sterilized, good guy, easy, put in a box, Mr. Perfect. Like be your true self. I think a lot of people will relate to that, especially because a lot of people are going through economic hardships. People are having to do things that are outside of their typical norm. So I feel like if Will Smith can have a human in a real last moment a lot of people will respect him for that especially those who think 
uh, Jada put some voodoo over her will or Jada's emasculating will. I think if Will really asserts himself and just shares his true self on some like 2020 Walter Barber type shit, it could actually work in his advantage. For yourself could also mean like, again, taking a break from the relationship. So it could be like, we still married on paper, but we might be separated right now. We might, you know, live in different homes right now. You know, we might be having different entanglements and trying to see like, if I'd rather be single than doing entanglement things, or if I want to recommit to this marriage and what that would look like. So there's an energy of balance, an energy of like respecting the relationship, respecting the person, respecting myself, but also an energy of like being true to myself, being my authentic self, doing what I want to do for myself authentically and honestly and even respectfully. So that is the tarot portion. And again, this is about Will and Jada, but like this is universal learning lessons, learning gems. It applies to everybody, regardless. Um, so that is a reading that I have for tonight. Usually these readings run extra, extra long, but they really, really did not this time around. So hopefully, like I said, the messages resonated with you. I know it's about Will and Jada, celebrity people, who cares? But a lot of people evidently do care. So if that resonated with you some way, shape, or form, if you're going through relationship troubles and woes, be your authentic self. Do not be in one of those anxious and uh, uh, insecure attachment relationships where love me, choose me, pick me, pick me, pick me. Do not be a pick me. Please stop. Have more self-esteem and respect and boundaries for yourself. And also don't be an avoided person who is like, Future faking, stringing people along, love bombing them, getting them to be emotionally available to you while you distance yourself. You're not consistent. You're non-committal. You don't open up. Nobody got time to be wasting themselves on somebody who is not certain what they want in a relationship. So be your authentic self, regardless. On this channel, paint your truth. I have been doing some Russia and Ukraine updates, but literally YouTube put out a warning message that said, basically, if you do any commentary or, or news about Ukraine that doesn't support the popular narrative, we will suppress your videos and possibly even wipe out your channel. So I'm trying to see if there are ways that I can continue giving you live and accurate um, news and updates about the Russia and Ukraine situation conflict without the aforementioned subtle threats of YouTube uh, happening to the channel because I do love coming up with spiritual content, doing these full moon videos and even doing the self-care process painting videos. So give me some time to think about it because I haven't recorded anything knowing that I'm pretty sure Russia, Ukraine is going to be censored or be on high alert when it goes to the YouTube system. When I upload these videos, I'm pretty sure they're going to hear NATO and they're going to like... Duh, 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 and they're going to know that I am not speaking the popular misinformation propaganda machine narrative. I'm going to tell you the true, real deal. I'm not going to say Russia's evil and Ukraine neo-Nazis are great. I'm also not going to say, oh, what Russia did was plausible. It has cause. It has merit because it does not. So that is to come. But um, you can find me on this Paint Your Truth channel. As I said, I have different content. Just definitely subscribe to, you know, watch, become a follower, become an active participant within the community as I create more content in regards to like spirituality, self-care, process painting, and news updates on Russia and Ukraine through a spiritual lens. Uh, you could also reach out to me via email at paintyourtruth.art if you would like to get a tarot reading or if you would like to have your own self-care process painting workshop or event with me. I am in the Massachusetts area, so you would have to actually be in Massachusetts. But if you are and that's something that ensures you, definitely reach out to me via email at paintyourtruth.art at gmail.com. You can find me all over social media, Facebook paint your truth instagram paint your truth underscore don't forget the underscore and of course youtube paint your truth youtube channel and you can also show your gratitude for this particular reading via cash app 
B W C I N E. Everything that you'll need to know will be down in the description box below. And with all that being said, y'all, be blessed, be enlightened, be loved, and I shall see you on the next full moon tarot reading. The energies for the reading should last about six weeks until the next full moon reading, but you will feel the energies around this particular reading and the gems and whatnot all throughout the next couple of weeks, in particular, the first two weeks after the full moon. Peace.